Hi Taurus, it's Raina. So I am doing a, it's called the Rainbow of Prosperity Spread and I got it online. And um, I'm doing this abundance type of money reading because I've been wanting to do something like this for a long time and just didn't get around to doing it. And so I looked up a spread and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try this out. So you're the first sign that I'm doing this particular spread with, and uh, we'll see where it goes. And this is for the first quarter of the year. Now, of course, <laughs> we're almost through the month of January, so we'll say from this new moon of January 27th until the new moon of March 27th in the sign of Aries, which is going to be during the beginning of the astrological new year, um, starting at the time of the vernal equinox. So this is eight cards, and I'm going to just take the first two from my first pile, and then from my second pile, I'll create two more piles. So I gotta make sure I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this is the eighth card. Okay. I don't know if you can see all of these cards. And if I have time, I will also pick a card from the Ascended Masters deck of Dorian Virtue. So the first card represents what you want, and it is the Nine of Wands. This is a card of somebody who is guarding the gates. So there's a sense of wanting to create boundaries and security, perhaps in your own personal life, if you're mingling finances, which you uh, have a transit of Saturn in the eighth house, Taurus in the sign of Sagittarius. This is lasting through 2017. Um, and this the eighth house is other people's money. So that can be an issue with Saturn there. There can be need to kind of, um, it can put restrictions on other people's money, but discipline um, highlight needs for organization of debts, of any kind of income that you get from money that you don't earn. And trying to, you know, like pay down debt is one thing, but loans is another. And, you know, if this is what you're looking for, you may be looking for ways to kind of like separate out your money if someone else for instance if you're in a marriage or long-term partnership and the other person is affecting your um you know income because of their financial problems that could be an issue and you're trying to like lay down the law and say that's yours and this is mine you know your financial problems are your own and be very kind of distinct about that but it could be just um, self-protective in general, where you want to have money so that, you know, in case something happens, you have uh, the ability to continue on. And this gives you peace of mind. As an earth sign, earth signs uh, tend to be very actively involved with finances. Actually, you're, you're the ruler of the second house of earned income. So anything dealing with either money that you earn, and this is for the universal house, the second house, or land, that's another one, um, that falls into this category. That's what Taurus is all about, as well as possessions. Now 
Now the second card represents what you need, and this is the Seven of Pentacles. Um, this is a card associated with patience, and Taurus is actually associated with having patience. Uh, and Pentacles connect to the Earth signs like Taurus, as well as Virgo and Capricorn. What you need is the ability to see something through in terms of anything that you're doing personally. If you have started a business, you may be concerned about it not being, um, you know, a, a big money maker right off the bat. This is the farmer card, and you can see that there are leaves growing from what he has planted. So there is growth, but it's a wait and see situation. So for some of you, you may be wanting to see uh, the progress, and you're tempted maybe to throw in the towel even, but you have to know that there is progress. It's, it's just that it needs more time. You know, a lot of businesses, and this goes for online businesses as well as brick and mortar, it takes time to develop customers, to develop clients, to get a following. It doesn't happen overnight. And you're typically very patient, but when it comes to something related to income, you may be a lot less inclined to give it that time because you may feel like I have to see the results now. You're so concerned about it that you want to see the tangible results. It could be showing signs of tangible results, but perhaps you're um, wanting more than what's being shown and so you still have to have patience. Now the third um, position is what you already have. And this is something that is not tangible. This is hope. This is healing. And so that is very important too if you're starting something. Now I, I'm feeling that for a lot of you that this reading would resonate, that you are starting, a, that you have started a business, that this is not you working at a different job, at a certain job for another person. And the reason I think this is because when people are waiting to see if something is, you know, working, it's usually because they're experimenting and they have the power to experiment. Usually if you're working for somebody else, you're just waiting around to see if they like you, if they think you're okay. And so this indicates, the Seven of Pentacles to me indicates autonomy in the money that you make. And so what you have, which is great, is a positive attitude about it. And I, I'm beginning to see the star now in terms of having gone through a lot the person having gone through a lot, and now they have faith again in life. So I always see it as kind of a renewal of sorts. And the person is kind of going through a, I don't know, a reboot when it comes to their feelings, their attitudes towards life. And maybe they were cynical at one point because things were they were all seeming to go wrong and now they feel like they're being guided maybe you even feel like you're being guided from above which can you know the star card can indicate that too into doing a particular thing that maybe even is you know something you wouldn't normally do you're a fixed sign so you tend to kind of pick a, a path and stay on it until the bitter end, you know. Even if it's something that isn't working out, you might be adverse to change. But for some reason, you're stepping out in faith. The fourth card indicates what you need to give up, and it's perfect. I'm glad it wasn't a card that is associated with something, you know, happy, because then that wouldn't make much sense. 
this is a card of, I would say there's two things going on with this card. A sense of, a lack of appreciation and a sense of being blasé or uninspired. So you see that somebody is being offered a golden chalice, a golden cup. Um, and, you know, because it's clouds, it's associated with almost like a spiritual blessing or a spiritual offering. And the person is kind of like staring straight ahead. They're not appreciating what's being offered, perhaps because it's not what they wanted. And I think that Taurus does tend to do this sometimes, where you have this ideal in your mind that you want to, to have, and something else comes along, and you're not grateful for whatever comes along because it wasn't what you wanted. Part of it is that rigid, you know, mindset that you want what you want when you want it. But it's also, I think, because you are an earth sign, you're thinking in literal terms, material terms. And so sometimes things come to us or are offered to us that are not exactly what we thought we wanted. And unless you are very philosophical about it, you can't really see the blessing in it. And and then there's the good old fashioned gratitude. Do you have it in life? Do you tend to take things for granted? Because that could be what's lacking in your life. And that can be a definite impediment to abundance. And it comes in you know, very, very different, you know, um, many ways, I should say, because I see people, somebody takes the trouble to hold the door for them and they say nothing. They do not say thank you. They do not appear to be appreciative. I am always appreciative if somebody, um, you know, seems to go out of their way to, you know, open the door for me or do something. Not not saying I'm so great, you know, you're not or anything like that. But I'm saying is that I notice these things. I notice when people don't do it. Even something like a cashier, uh, you know, handing you change. If you say thank you when they hand you your package, you know, or you just grab the package and leave and not, you know, pay attention to these times. It's not just about etiquette and just being a zombie and being into etiquette but just about appreciating when people strangers are kind you know this is a card um, this could be an emotional offering because it's of cups and maybe it wasn't what you wanted you know it isn't the relationship you wanted it isn't whatever the offer you wanted so are you going to just be ungrateful or are you at least going to say to the person that you appreciate the offer and the other thing too is not cultivating passion in life just going along to get along that's another thing that i think has to be looked at when it comes to the um, four of cups because when you're just um an automatic and you're like, I just want the money, show me the money. And then you go to work and you you may do a great job, but you're just, your heart isn't in it. And you, you come home, you're not living, you're maintaining your body. That's what you're doing with your life. You're not doing anything more profound than that. And that kind of life is, seems like very empty to me. So just a few thoughts on that card. What step do you need to take next? Wow. Well, this couldn't be any more, cool, you know, cool as a next step. It's the first card of the Major Arcana. The, the Fool card is about stepping out into the unknown. So this would imply that not only do you have to take a new direction in whatever it is in order to really see abundance coming to you, Taurus, but you have to do so without any preconceived notions of what's going to happen. So it's not that you need to necessarily even 
start a new project. Although, if you if you're the kind of person who is into astrology and the tarot and all this stuff, you may have heard that all the plants are direct until I believe it's February sixth. So, this is the time, this window of time, when people can start new things, and there's just green lights. Okay, there's nothing stopping. Uh, there's nothing, and, and and I hate to even use the word stopping because it's not something outside of you stopping, but the universe is cooperating fully, even if you want to look at it just symbolically. And so definitely be aware of that. I'm I'm recording this on the new moon in Aquarius. Oh yeah, and the new moon in Aquarius is your 10th house of career. So that could be a turning point in your career, Taurus. And maybe part of that is letting go of expectations, ideas of how it has to be in order for it to be okay. Just allow whatever happens to happen and be grateful for it. Be grateful for whatever comes your way. Experiment. The sixth card, sixth card is um, resources that are out there for you to use. This is a six of swords. This is connected to, um, it could be connected to actual um I would say any any kind of information. So, you know, whether it's online sources, anything that you're trying to accomplish financially, whether it's just on the on the mental spiritual level of learning how to have a more abundant attitude, you can find online. Abraham Hicks material, there are other even like very cheap uh, Kindle books that can talk about manifestation techniques. There are guided meditations. But the Six of Swords is about leaving chaos behind in order to, you know, go towards peace. So it could be that some of you are in physical surroundings that are not conducive to you having that sort of abundant mindset. Maybe you're around people who are, um, you know, telling you that you can't do this or that. I would definitely, you know, advise you to be very careful about sharing your ideas or your plans with other people before you've executed them. Because there are people who get threatened by those who are trying to better themselves. And they, they may not be malicious people. They may not want you to fail. But it's hard for them to see you succeed while they're not succeeding. It's hard to see, the, see you going after your dreams while they don't have the courage to, you know, become free from whatever situation they're in. And so they may keep you. So this could be something to do with... Um, the it could be the even the social circle that you belong to it could be the environment the neighborhood the you know it could be anything you know even a neighborhood you know it's funny we always talk about that's shallow because that's that's not you that's not your own you can transcend where you live believe me it's amazing it can have a very subtle but important influence if you surround yourself even if you never talk to the people in a community where people are successful and they have good habits, um, even if you don't have long conversations with them, th their energy, their positive energy rubs off on you. And, uh, you know, I can totally vouch for that because I, you know, I, I came, you know, the last place I lived, you know, when you see people getting arrested, you know, spread eagle on, on a cop car, when you see broken glass and people littering. You see ignorance. You know, that kind of thing does not put you in a positive frame of mind. And as much as you may say that you're not a part of that, 
it still affects you at a very subtle level. And so just consider, you know, your particular environment where you're living and whether or not it reflects the goals that you have for your abundance. And I realize, you know, for some people, you know, financially, you can't just say, oh, yeah, I, this place sucks. I'm going to just leave tomorrow. But at least you can, you can, you know, have that as your goal and say, I don't know, I'm, it's not my business how the universe is going to do this for me. But you know what? I'm done with this place. God bless it for what it was for the time I was here, but I'm, I've outgrown it. And I'm ready for more magnificent surroundings and the higher consciousness surroundings. Okay, and um, and this is who or, let's see, who will, who can help you. This could be a fire sign individual, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, in some capacity, um, the, the, ten of, the Ten of Wands deals with working very hard at something and, and shouldering a lot of the responsibility. So perhaps it's somebody even at your current workplace. But it could be simply somebody of the fire element. Now we could also look at the number 10 and, and what that connects to. Um, 10, I don't know if it be, you know, the 10th month is actually Libra. So I don't know if that would also be the case. Maybe somebody who is at work, who's a Libran, who can help you in that, that also is connected to swords, air signs, but who, whoever this person is, um, they can, you know, this could also be that they're helping you in terms of maybe if you have your own business and you feel overwhelmed, that this person can help to take some of that off of you. And uh, so maybe there's somebody around you that is willing to share in the work because if this is you, you may be risking uh, collapse if you're really busy trying to get something off the ground. I also will say, too, that what can help you is to let go of the need to do everything at once. So if you're somebody who is perhaps, um, I'm, I'm thinking like a Taurus person, is, I think, in a lot of ways, is very resourceful. And so you're capable of doing things alone, even though you might like to have other people around. I think that you're capable of doing things alone, and maybe that stubbornness also extends to not wanting to, to act like you need help. And yet, if you're trying to get something off the ground you may feel like you have to do everything within a certain time frame. You don't. There's no, that's the beautiful thing for working, uh, about working for yourself, is that you don't have to do everything today. And so maybe you need to stop being so ambitious. Maybe you're being too ambitious and you're, um, if you, you know, have some kind of uh, nervous exhaustion where you can't even work for a while, that's not going to do you any good. That's not going to help your business. So it would be, you'd be better off doing things gradually than trying to do everything all at once. Okay. The last card is now they said the prize or the end result. The strength card, now this connects to Leo, so there may be somebody who's a Leo that's a fire sign who you are um, involved with that's helping you. But in terms of just the end result, 
you will likely, if you can be moderate in your behavior and be hopeful on a continuous level and to kind of move away from bad influences, you can be very, uh, end up being in a very strong position. And it's not just in terms of your business doing well. Now remember, since this is connected to Leo, Leo is the ruler of the fifth house, which does involve, in, addi in addition to like love affairs and children, it does involve home businesses. And this sense of strength is going to also be an inner strength, confidence, that you can do something. Perhaps for some of you, the challenge has been, you know, will I be successful? Will, can I even do this? If this is something that is totally new for you. And it always feels so good when you've started something and you start to see the results paying off, you know, as represented by the seven of pentacles. But in addition to that, also feeling like you have some victories under your belt. And so you can feel more um, proud of your accomplishments and ready to tackle new things that come along. So that sounds really cool. And this is, as I say, this is going into the um, spring period. And as, as long as I have... Um, some time to devote to it. And I remember I'll, you know, pick it up where we left off in March. So I'm going to uh, pick a card from the Ascenders, Ascended Masters deck and just look at the theme of it. Interesting. This is a card. This is Merlin. It says energy healing. So for some of you, maybe this is the type of um, line of work that you're interested in going into. Energy healing is like Reiki and shamanic healing. Okay. So I could definitely see a Taurus person who is interested in, in that sort of thing. Because, um, I, you know, to tell you the truth, even massage therapy, I could see for some of you, that's a, ta you know, hands-on very tangible type of, uh, um, you know, endeavor. And healing is part of this abundance reading. It's not just about the finances. The pentacles connect, and that's, you know, the earth element in the tarot is, the, is represented by pentacles. And it's not just your career, and it's not just the money. It's also health, healing. And that's what abundance is. Abundance is not just, and maybe that um, energy healing is also a call for some of you. Maybe that's what you need to do if you have any blockages. And you need to kind of see that flow of that energy is to be able to, um, you know, that might be the kind of avenue to go in to, to help your abundance consciousness as well. The third chakra is the power chakra, and that tends to be when people are underactive in the chakra. The third chakra is like the stomach area, the abdomen, the abdominal region. And when people have a weak or underactive third chakra, they have a hard time asserting themselves. They tend to feel victimized in their work because they feel like they're always being um how would i say oppressed by others and not that they don't have the kind of ability to stand up for themselves and they can generally have a difficult time being ambitious they tend to take life as it comes without um, putting out effort because they just don't feel a sense of self-empowerment so that energy healing can help to free some of those blockages so that your chakras are, the energy is moving freely through it and there's no imbalances. So anyway, Taurus, this is a, a little experiment of mine and I hope you enjoyed this. Take care of yourselves. Bye.